everybody and welcome to my channel. Um, this is my first ever video and I decided to create this channel in the hopes of helping uh, uni applicants, particularly to the UK, as well as future vet students because I myself am going to be a future vet student. So hi, my name is Zoe and I'm an 18 year old international school student from Hong Kong um, and I applied to uh, vet school via UCAS uh, for the 2020 October September intake and I'm an IB graduate well sort of as we know the IB exams have been cancelled this year which is a bit unfortunate as exams are my they're better than my coursework so I hope that I can meet the grades that I need to get into vet school I applied to four vet schools and one zoology course uh, via UCAS because as a vet student or a medicine student or a dentistry student you can only apply to four schools of your choice and then one of a different field. So that's what I did. So I applied to the University of Edinburgh, I applied to the Royal Veterinary College, University of Nottingham and Bristol for the D100 course and I applied to Bangor University for a bachelor's in zoology with a focus on herpetology, which are reptiles, because reptiles are my favorite. So as of a couple of weeks ago, I found out that I got into all five schools that I applied to, including all four veterinary schools, which is a little bit uncommon, I guess, for veterinary schools, because it's so competitive. However, with the rise of the two new veterinary schools, such as the Harper and Keel Veterinary School and the double intake from Nottingham, I guess it wouldn't be unwise to say that it's a bit easier to get in uh, this year and in the future years compared to about five years ago when really it was really very competitive. Um, so, so today I'll be walking through the journey on how I applied to vet school since like the start of high school um, all the way up until a couple of weeks ago and then hopefully in July 5th, July 5th, I'll get my grade saying that I have made it into my firm and insurance choice. Well, my firm choice, I guess. But we never know. That could not happen. So I'm not saying that I'm in vet school. I'm just saying that I've got all five offers, uh, which I think is a remarkable feat of its own and deserves to be celebrated, even if I may not necessarily get into it, which we will not dwell about today. So I studied the International Bachelorette, um, which is an equivalent to the A-level, except we do six subjects and then an additional subject called Theory of Knowledge. And our three HL subjects are considered to be equivalent to the three A-level subjects that you would take for entry into uh, UK schools uh, if you're a UK student. So the subjects that I took were high level biology, chemistry, geography and standard level mathematics, <laughs> Chinese B because I am not bilingual and English language and literature. The predicted grades that I had for the subjects were a 7 in geography and a 6-6 six, six in biology, chemistry uh, and a 7 in maths and a 6-6 six, six in English and Chinese, uh, which 7-6-6 six, six in your HLs is enough for most schools. I would say not Cambridge. 7-6-6 six, six is not enough for Cambridge. I would recommend you apply to Cambridge only if you have a 7-7-6. Seven, seven, six. I had a 7-6-6 six, six, which was enough for the four schools that I wanted to apply for. Uh, and honestly, right up until literally 14th October, I had not yet applied. I really applied on the night of 14th October, which is fine because you know you have they have to consider everyone who applies before 15th of october but the level of stress i felt was not worth it apply by the 10th if possible especially because you have all these supplementary forms that you need to fill out which i will get to you're an ib student aim for a 766 in your hls especially as trying to get a 7 in biology and chemistry i didn't but that's that's fine and um Try to get a 7 maths. Maths is a requirement. Try not to have any 5s, basically, when you apply. Even though um, the conditional offers that the schools will give you will say 5 in maths and 5 in English. Just try to be above that because you want to be com a bit more competitive. So those are my predicted grades. Um, and as every vet student knows, you have to do work experience. I live in Hong Kong and I'm a Singaporean. I grew up in a metropolitan city. There's no such thing as farms in Singapore. 
Um, we don't have chicken farms, we don't have dairy farms, we don't have an abattoir, that kind of thing. It was really difficult, I guess, to find work experience, especially when the culture of work experience in Asia is not there. Like, you can't just apply for an internship for two weeks as a high school student, as a 16 year old, and have people go, oh yeah, we'll take you in, no cat. Especially when the like the layouts of the clinics and hospitals here, especially in Hong Kong, are so small. They don't, they don't want you. So the work experience that I did was I did uh, four weeks at the Singapore Zoo. I did one and a half weeks at a stables here in Hong Kong. I did two weeks at an animal hospital here in Hong Kong and a separate week in another animal hospital here in Hong Kong. Honestly, that is really little. I would feel like... I didn't really talk to many uh, of the European or the Western vet students, obviously, because I'm in Asia. And all the veterinary students that I interviewed with were also from Asia. But I feel like that really isn't very competitive. I feel like the only itch that I had was the whole month I spent in the Singapore Zoo. The universities that I spoke to uh, made it clear that for certain students in certain countries, they are more lenient on what they constitute as, like, um, diverse work experience because obviously they know there are limitations that we cannot fix. So I could not gain experience in a dairy farm no matter how hard I try because none of them exist where I live. There was no way I would be able to spend time lambing or on a dairy farm or anywhere else. So I suppose that helps a lot as an Asian candidate because they know, they know that they, you, can't, you can't do it no matter how hard you try. So that was really important. Getting sufficient work experience is really important. Another thing that I'm talking about is my personal statement. A personal statement is a statement that you submit to all universities. It's one generic statement for all schools that you apply to. I can't remember how many characters there are. 4,000? I think it's a 4,000 character uh, statement. So the way I structured my personal statement was I had an introduction first on why I wanted to study veterinary medicine. So I started it with I would like to study veterinary medicine as blah 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 blah, which is like a super generic open statement and it's not really like eye-catching, but uh, as long as it gets to the point, I feel like it's okay and clearly it was enough. So I had that line and then um, I spent a fair few chunks talking about my work experience. I made sure to focus on the things that I was particularly passionate about. So for example, I was more passionate about uh, my month at the zoo because I my dream and in the future is to be a wildlife veterinarian, so um, I emphasize heavily on the two weeks that I spent in the herpetology department and the two weeks I spent in the primates department, what I learned, what I did, and then I made sure to talk about like the qualities of the veterinarians that I worked with and what I saw and then what I admired about them. For example, their critical thinking skills, the uh, patience, their demeanor, how they handled with, how they talk to their clients who were distressed or who weren't listening to them. So I emphasize heavily on people skills. Um, this is me filming on my phone. I totally forgot to mention that you need to spend like a fair few bits talking about extracurriculars. So I mentioned how I was in MUN. I mentioned how I was in my school's arts club. So I spent a fair number of characters on that. Um, usually schools will have like a, how much percentage of a personal statement should be on it, but I feel like just write what's fit. There's no set number of characters or, um, you know, or percentage of a statement that has to be an extracurriculars. But I did spend the last two paragraphs or so discussing what I did in school and what I learned from it and how I grew as a result of these extracurriculars. And also don't forget that schools such as the RVC, their supplementary forms do have a chunk on extracurriculars. So you can mention like what you like mention some stuff that you did in your personal statement and then embellish it further as well as bringing in your other stuff in the supplementary forms. So I talked about M1 in my arts club here, but I talked about my head of house position and my leadership position in the supplementary forms. Most schools, especially in Hong Kong, most international schools in Hong Kong, have a British Roadshow Council. It's like a university talk where somebody from a university will come down to your school and like share more about the university. And go 
for them. I don't care if you don't want to end up going to Glasgow or something for any medicine. Just go for them, learn what the school is looking for as a candidate and apply it. I'm serious. I went to so many Royal Veterinary College talks, like so, so, so many of them. Every time they came to my school from 2016 to 2020, a total of eight times. I went each time so that I could talk to the admissions officer and I could talk to the head of student recruitment and they would know my name so that when I apply, they will see my name there and they will know it is me. I'm telling you, they don't forget you. Build up your repertoire with the with them, build up your image with them, they will remember you, especially if you're engaging and you ask the right questions, you ask about what they're looking for and as a candidate, ask what they want to see in a personal statement, ask how they want their supplementary forms to be answered, ask how they want their interviews to be conducted. Seriously, ask them all the questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. They want to be asked. It's their job. Their job is to help you get in. Their job is to admit you. So you want to increase your chances of that as much as possible. Talk to the admissions officer. Email the admissions officer. Whatever. Just make sure that the email that, that the admissions officer or the head of student recruitment knows your name. But it helps. Seriously, it does. It helps. Build up your connections with every single vet school, knowing every single one. Even if you don't want to go to the University of Nottingham, if the University of Nottingham is coming down to your school. Go for it because even though you don't want to go to their school, the things that they say could still help you a lot because it is a generic application process. It is a generic personal statement. You want to maximize your chances. So network, network, network. That is my biggest suggestion to you. Get your name out there. Make them recognize your name. And even if the university does not come down to the school, if you're in the UK, Go to the school. Just go for the opening days. Make sure they know your name. Make sure they know your face. Interact with the admissions officers. You know? Yeah. And in Hong Kong, we have university fairs, like large scale university fairs organized by the British Council. Go for them. If the universities don't go to your school, go to them, you know? If they don't come to you, you go to them. That just shows your passion and your enthusiasm for the course. Go to them. So lastly, as, a, as an application process, we have these things called supplementary forms, which are the most annoying thing on earth because, you know, you submit your application on the 15th of October, you're thinking, I'm done. And then suddenly you're like, oh, uh, could you like submit this form for me? Like, could you write out your work experience form or the yeah, ethical questionnaire? If you apply to the University of Nottingham, you know, there are three forms that you have to fill out. My hint to you, especially if you're applying to Bristol, where there is no interview and everything writes on that f on that form and submit. So open a Google Doc, uh, copy and paste all the questions that they ask and put it in that Google Doc and then write out your answers and maximize the word count. Like the word count I think for Bristol was like right up to like 300 words and some people were only writing like 50. No! Write at least 280. Seriously, like show them that you're interested. Show them that you want to do it. I, my Bristol offer came like literally so fast. Uh, it was the first offer that I got. I got it before December 2019 and I applied October 15, 2019. So seriously, copy and take all the questions and copy and paste them into a separate document. That way you can proofread it and like if you write it once, you can come back to it another day and read it again if you said you hate it and start over or you can improve it. It just it helps a lot. And personally for me, I made errors on my work experience form so I submitted within the wrong number of hours. I just emailed the school, they were very understanding about it. I submitted it wrongly for RVC and Bristol. Um, but they were nice about it. So they just they told me that they had recognized my error and they will change it on their side of the portal. And for obviously in Edinburgh, you need to upload your IGCSE certificates or your GCSE certificates. Um, and for me, in IGCSE, I only did biology and chemistry. I did not do physics, which if you're a vet student, you know physics is an IGCSE is a prerequisite. So I... Uh, did physics on June 2019 instead of June 2018. So my cert only came in late December. So I just emailed uh, Edinburgh and I emailed RBC and I said, hey, my cert is only coming in a couple of weeks. Is that okay? Uh, I'll email it to you once I get it. They were very 
nice about it too, very understanding. So it's fine if you don't have your shirts yet, they will wait for you. It's it's cool. They they're nice about it. And lastly, the interviews. My only tip is to read up on drug calculations. Edinburgh has a math component about drug calculations, so I read about it the night before. That was very helpful. Uh, make sure you know what you write on your personal statement well, because like my interviews were in late January. Um, and I wrote my personal statement in October and frankly I hadn't read it since so the night before I glanced my personal statement for example if you talk about stem cell therapy you gotta know how stem cell therapy works and if you talk about um, zoos you need to know the ethical questions behind zoos I uh, read up a lot on ethical problems within uh, veterinary medicine read up a lot on welfare issues read up a lot on um, like the RCVS, what they come as ethical and what they come as unethical, and read them on animal laws. For example, I had a question about animal adoption, and I did not know like the UK or the EU. Back then, it was still the EU. <laughs> I did not know about the EU laws or about um, about animal adoption or like when is it legal for you to adopt an animal, like a deceased owner, that kind of thing. So read up about that. Read up about certain animal diseases. I had a really difficult question about the RVC where he gave me like a picture of like the liver and it was a liver with cancer and he asked me to identify it and I could not identify it. So it took me a while before I realized it was the liver and then once I realized it was the liver and he was like, yes, 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 good, good job. Um, the interviewers are there to help you. They guide you to the correct answer. They're not looking for you to like see a picture of the lungs and go, oh, that's lung cancer. They're not, because they know that you are not like a pathologist, you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, instead, he asked me how, like, what kind of symptoms a dog would present with if he had liver cancer. I, obviously, I, I did not know. So I said, oh, he could have, um, she could present with, like, digestive issues. And he was like, really? Do you think so in the liver? And I was like, mm, well, you know, it'll probably, like, the cancer cells may be transported via the bloodstream, which will eventually go to the heart. And then he went, and where does the heart pump to? And I was like, oh, I was so stressed out, I was so nervous, because, you know, RBC is a big school. Um, eventually, I walked through the circulatory process of the, of the heart, and I remembered <laughs> everything goes through the lungs. So he puts on the like, breathing, etc. Um, so the interviewers, they're there. They're not there to scare you, they're there to be your friend, they're there to help you and to guide you from thought to thought. For example, I had a question in the University of Edinburgh about like animal welfare and it was with pigs and as you all know, no pig farms. <laughs> I've not been to a pig farm, I've never seen a pig farm. I don't know anything about pig ethics or like how to raise a pig. Um, so the interviewer, she was very understanding and she uh, helped me say that like in certain countries, these kinds of farms are, are banned and why do you think so and then from there you can kind of make like logical rational judgments as long as you defend your answer well like as long as you are able to give your answer and then defend it when they play devil's advocate you're fine seriously you're, you're more than fine just be yourself answer truthfully i was asked who my biggest role model is in life and i immediately answered michelle obama and then i realized oh shit the guy is opposite me being a trump supporter Thankfully, he wasn't, but even if that's the case, as he can't fault you for, you know, supporting blue when he's like right wing or whatever. So just be yourself, be truthful to yourself, and don't be afraid to express yourself and to ask questions um, when you're not clear about what you're supposed to do. Some of them are a little bit, conversations a little bit confusing. It's an MMI. I might do another interview. I might do another video about an MMI in a couple of weeks. Anyway, I hope this video helps uh, you and your veterinary school journey. Um, I hope now you know to network, to write a good personal statement that's cohesive and to embellish the qualities you want to embellish about yourself. Uh, I hope you know to, uh, like to consider your work experience and how much you actually managed to gain and whether or not that's a risk you want to take when you apply to vet school. Uh, for example, you may, may want to take a gap year if you're only 16 when you're having to apply because you may not get work experience opportunities. Well, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I have a feeling this video is actually going to reach nobody. 
this is my first video, but we'll see. Okay, all the best in your application process. See y'all later when I'm hopefully in vet school. <laughs> Bye!